Today I'm going to show you how to make a wooden house with a thatched roof for all of your tabletop games. The materials that we'll be using will be listed in the description box as well for a quick reference guide. Also, we will be building two different style of houses, one with and one without brickwork involved. That all being said, let's get building. To get started, we need to build our base structure. I use foam card of 3mm thick for the floor and walls. As the finished building will measure 14 by 10 cm once completed, I take over the thickness of the foam card on all sides. This means that the floor will be 13.4 by 9.4 cm. If your foam card has a different thickness, you'll have to do some calculating yourself for everything to fit, so do keep this in mind. Moving on to the walls, let's start with the front and back of the house. The measurements of these are as followed. 10 cm in length and 5.5 cm in height on both sides. The tip touching the roof has a height of 8.5 cm, which is measured around the middle of the wall. To give the building some extra support, I add an additional wall in the middle of the structure for the roof to rest on. This one follows the same steps as the walls in front and back, minus the thickness of your foam cart on both sides and the bottom. The walls on the side of the house measure 13.4 cm in length and 5.5 cm in height. This way they will fit in perfectly between the walls in the front and back. Once all walls are cut out from the foam cart, it is time to put them together. We'll start with the outside walls and floor, as these have the same length after all. Put some PVA glue on the side of the base and push the wall against it. I like to use pin heads to keep everything in place, so that they won't shift during building and drying. Now do the same for the walls in the front and back, and don't forget the extra piece in the middle. If however you prefer yourself a house built on some bricks, that's also an option. To do so, I glue foam bricks on a base of thin cardboard, measuring 14 by 10 cm again. You can get these foam bricks for very cheap on eBay. The ones I use are 2 by 1 by 1 cm, but there are other sizes too. Once the first layer has dried, we continue with a second in the opposite direction. So one brick covers two halves of the first layer, much like in real life. I once again use pinheads to keep everything in place. And I also add some additional bricks in the corners and the middle of the building, to give it some extra support. From here, it is basically the same as the wooden house. We start with a floor piece on top of the bricks, but do remember to cut off the thickness of your foam cart on all of the sides. Otherwise your walls will have no place to sit. Also, keep in mind that the bricks have a height of 2 cm already, so your foam cart walls will be shorter. Now that your base structure is ready, it is time to bring some life to the house. To cover the walls, I use wooden steering sticks for coffee. I got these in my local hobby shop in a pack of 1000 for really cheap. This makes it easy to cover the entire front and back wall in PVA and glue the sticks to them, starting from the bottom. Also, do keep in mind that not all of the sticks might be perfectly straight, so some bending might be needed, or skipping on some pieces altogether. Once dried, I use a pair of scissors to cut off all the excessive parts. Don't worry too much if it's not perfect, as we will cover the corners later. For the side walls, we'll have to do some measuring. On one end of the steering sticks, draw a straight line using your geo triangle and a pen. This is where we will cut off the rounded edges. With the ends cut off, we will be using two sticks per layer. I drew a line in the middle of the wall so I knew how far they would go, as the now straight ends will meet each other at this line. Again, no worries if they don't touch each other perfectly, as we will cover that in the next step. To tidy up the house and give it some extra detail and support too, I used the same sticks as before to create a beam-like look on the corners and the middle of the side walls. First, using your geo triangle and pen again, measure 6 pieces of 5.5cm each and cut them out. Per side wall there will be 3 pieces used, one on each end where the corners of the different walls meet, and also one in the middle. These will cover any imperfections of the previous step, whilst making it look nicer too. We do the same with the walls in the front and back, but with some slight adjustments. First, we cut off the bottom on 4 sticks again, to make one of the edges straight as we did when covering the side walls. Next, we place the stick in the corner and draw a line in the back of it, where the wall ends. Doing so will mark the stick so we know where to cut it off, so that it follows the oblique wall perfectly. All that's left now is to glue them in place and let them dry. With the main building now complete, apart from the doors and windows which we'll cover later, it is time to start on the roof. 
We take our foam call again and make two rectangular shapes of 7.5 by 16 centimeters. This will make the roof a bit longer than the walls, creating some sort of shelter for the residents. I do advise you to draw the outlines of the wall on it though, as you'll see I did in the next part. This makes it easier for you to know where to glue it later, as the additional length might make it a bit confusing. We don't want one side being longer than the other after all. With the base for the roof cut out, it's time to isolate it. For this we'll be using faux fur. The one I use is the size of a blanket, of which I cut out a piece, as the entire thing was a bit too tricky to get on camera. When you glue the foam called pieces on the faux fur, make sure that you leave some space between the two. Once it's time to cut out the pieces, it's important that you cut off a little extra on top of one of the two pieces. Approximately 2cm is more than enough. This additional length will be used as a sort of transition between the two pieces, as you'll see in the next step. The next thing to do is rather straightforward, as we'll simply attach the roof to the house using PVA glue. This is where the outlines you made earlier will come in handy, as now you know where to glue the roof without any confusion. Simply follow the lines, put it on and use pinheads to keep it all in place. Do the same for the other side and give it some time to dry. You can flip the house upside down and put some watered down PVA in the crevices if you prefer. Though it should not be necessary. The house is now really starting to take shape, but we're not done yet. What we're about to do next can get really messy, so put some paper towels on your house to keep everything clean. We'll be mixing some PVA glue with some water to thin it all down, and then we'll cover the entire roof in it. Be sure not to miss a single spot here. This is also where the additional flap of faux fur from earlier comes in. What you want to do is give it a bit of a comb over, so that it fits in with the other side nicely, and not leaving any bald spots on your roof. Speaking of a comb over, a comb is exactly what we'll be using next. Just like with a bad hair day, your roof looks kind of messy right now, so let's straighten it out. Simply comb the fur down and sort of sculpt it in position to your liking. This will also get any loose plugs out as well as some of the water. To get the remaining water out of the fur, I run my hobby knife sideways over the roof, top to bottom. Just look at all that water pouring out. Good thing we got those paper towels to absorb it. For the cross beams at the sides of the roof, we'll be using some popsicle sticks. These are thicker and sturdier than the steering sticks, and will give some variety to the building as well. I measured the beam of my original house that I made, which basically has one end cut off straight and the opposite side cut in a tip, so that when the two beams cross, the tops are both flat. Now that I know where to cut the edges, it's time to figure out where the two sticks will cross. For this, I tape one of the two popsicle sticks to the roof to keep it in place, and then put the other stick against it. Next, we will mark where the two will meet with a pen or pencil. Now that we know where the two sticks will cross, we'll have to file down this part on both of them. This can be a bit time consuming, but will look great once finished. Let's have a look. And here we go! Perfect fit! But before you glue them, do a dry fit on the house first, in case there is some space between the gaps after filing. We have to make sure they follow the roof nicely after all. Once the sticks are together, apply some PVA glue to the sides of the roof. I use quite a thick layer so that it spreads nicely inside of the faux fur too, which will create a stronger adhesion. With the roof now finished, it's time for the final step of this tutorial, and that's the doors and windows. I'll be making two different doors so you can choose which you prefer. Both the doors are made by gluing five steering sticks together with a length of 4cm each. To make sure they're all in the right position, I like to put something straight underneath it, such as this cotton candy stick for instance, which we'll be using for the windows later. If you like a round door, you're almost finished already. Take a 25mm round base and lay it on top of the door, so that the base edges meet those of the door. Now simply draw a line following the base with a pen and cut it out. For the rectangular door, however, we'll use three toothpicks. We start by gluing two toothpicks to the door, one on each side. Now cut the tips of the last toothpick using a hobby knife, so that it fits in between the two others, and glue it all together. When you found a place you think the door will fit, Glue it to the house using PVA glue and let it dry. Now there's just one last thing missing, the doorknob. I marked where I want it to be and drill a hole in it using a 1mm hand drill. For the knob itself I'll be using the pinheads from earlier. With a drop of super glue on the rod of the pinhead, slide it in the drilled hole and there you go. For the windows, draw a rectangle on a piece of thin cardboard that's 2.5cm wide. Next, we will use some steering sticks again for our window covers. We will need 4 pieces that measure 1.3cm each, so mark them on the sticks and cut them out. Remember the cotton candy stick from earlier? 
This will serve as the windowsill. As this will be glued on the cardboard, it will be just as wide, which is 2.5 centimeters. I like to mark every side of the cotton candy stick, to make sure it will be straight as I saw it out, which is next. I use a hobby saw myself to get through them quick and safe. Once done, I file down the sides a little bit, to make sure that they're straight. With the window sill and covers cut out, it's time to combine them. Start by gluing the piece of cotton candy stick on the bottom line of the cardboard piece. Now take a toothpick and cut off one of the tips and glue it on top of the window sill, following the side lines, to make sure it's straight. Now take the four small pieces from the steering stick and glue them all next to each other. Next we'll glue one toothpick at the opposite side of the previous one, and then finish it all by gluing one more toothpick in between the other two. Once cut out from the cardboard, find yourself a nice spot to put your windows and glue them on there using PVA glue to finish your house. And there we have it, your house is now complete and ready to get painted. Speaking of which, a painting tutorial will be uploaded too which you can find in the top right corner now, as well as at the end screen of the video and in the description box.